Hello everyone, welcome back to the series of lectures in cardiology. Today we will be learning about another important aspect of ECG which is chamber enlargement and hypertrophy. So how do we approach and identify chamber enlargement and hypertrophies on the ECG? So first, the first chamber enlargement ECG that we will be looking at is your right atrial enlargement, is your right atrial enlargement, right. So this is the RA and LA and how does the ECG change when there is a right atrial enlargement. So we know that atrial depolarization on the ECG is shown by the P wave. So the initial upstroke is by the, is due to the depolarization of the RA and the later part of the later half of the P wave is due to depolarization of the LA, correct. So, which are the two leads in which you look for, for appreciating the morphology of the P wave? That is your lead 2 and your lead P1, okay. So, this is the normal P wave which is upright in lead 2 and it is a biphasic wave in lead V1. So, normal P wave is upright in lead 2 and biphasic in lead V1. So, whenever there is a right atrial enlargement, where do you get a right atrial enlargement in pulmonary hypertension, in pulmonary stenosis, okay. So, you can get a right atrial enlargement. So, whenever you get a right atrial enlargement, the height of the P wave is more than 2.5 small boxes. The height of the P wave is more than 2.5 small boxes, okay. Or in lead B1, the initial part of the biphasic P wave is taller, okay. The initial part of the biphasic P wave is taller. So, let us look at this ECG. Can you see tall P waves, tall P waves and lead B1, the initial portion, the initial portion is the one which is more upright. So, this is what we call as your P pulmonale. This is what we call as your P pulmonate. Okay, fine. Now let us look at the second abnormality, right? The second abnormality is your left atrial enlargement. So when there is a left atrial enlargement, what happens to the P wave? The P wave width increases. P wave width increases to more than 2.5 small boxes. To more than 2.5 small boxes. Or the second portion is more deep and this is what we call as your P mitral. This is what we call as your P mitral and the condition where it is seen is seen in mitral stenosis. So let us look at this ECG. You can see that there is a wide P wave and a hump like appearance and in the lead V1 you can see the second portion of the P wave is much more deeper. So this is what we call as your P mitral. Okay, fine. Where do you find biatrial enlargement? Where do you find biatrial enlargement? You see it in mitral stenosis. So, both left atrial and right atrial enlargement is seen in what? Mitral stenosis. Okay, fine. Now, let us go to ventricular enlargement which is your ventricular hypertrophy. First, we will start with your left ventricular hypertrophy. Fine. In left ventricular hypertrophy, what are the changes that you are seeing? What are the changes that you are seeing? So, what you will find is deep S waves in V1 and V2 and tall R waves in V5 and V6. So, you find deep S waves in V1 and V2 and tall R waves in V5 and V6. Just remember this basic and then we will go to all other aspects of LVH. So, what happens is that when you have a left ventricular hypertrophy. When you have a left ventricular hypertrophy, this is your lead V1. V1 looks um, the inferior and septal aspect and this is your V6 and V5 which looks at the LV more laterally, right. So, when there is a left ventricular hypertrophy, the net axis is like this, right. So, what happens in lead V6? The R waves become tall because it takes more time for the electrical activity to get conducted and because this direction is towards the lead, the positive deflection becomes taller and there is a tall R wave in V5, V6, more than 30 mm. 
but in lead v1 what happens the net direction is away from lead v1 so what deflection will you get you will get a negative deflection and this is your v s wave in v1 v2 more than 30 mm okay so if you understand the concept it becomes very very simple now if you add this both together s wave in v1 plus r wave in v5 v6 is more than 35 mm this is what we call as your sokolov leon criteria so this is what we call as the sokolov leon criteria okay so let us look at it in this ecg as well fine so can you see here that you have deep s waves in v1 and tall r waves in v5 v6 tall r waves in v5 v6 and if you add them up tall r waves in v5 v6 plus the s waves in v1 more than 35 mm it is suggestive of a left ventricular hypertrophy it is suggestive of a left ventricular hypertrophy fine what are the other changes that you can see a tall r wave in avl more than 11 mm a tall r wave in avl more than 11 mm can you see this here so this is also another defining feature of left ventricular hypertrophy okay then you will see that there is an increased duration of the qrs complexes why is there an increased duration because whenever you have a hypertrophy whenever you have a hypertrophy the time taken for the activation of the ventricle the time taken for the activation of the ventricle is prolonged because it has to muscle to muscle and it takes a longer time to get activated this is what we call as the ventricular activation time so it's increased and there is a prolonged duration of the qrs complex because the qrs complex basically represents what it represents the ventricular depolarization okay naturally when there is a left ventricular hypertrophy the net vector move more towards the ventricle with the higher mass so if there is a left ventricular hypertrophy what will be the axis the axis will be more towards the left so this is your left axis deviation now whenever there is a left ventricular enlargement there can be pressure changes transmitted to the left atrium as well so they can be associated left atrial abnormalities also yeah so you can find left atrial enlargement also associated with the left ventricular hypertrophy so this becomes very easy you have understood the mechanism of left ventricular hypertrophy so what will you find on the ecg first point you can find deep s waves in v1 and tall r waves in v5 v6 you have understood why that happens you can find tall r waves in avl more than 11 mm also you can find left axis deviation can you see that there is a positive qrs complex in lead 1 negative in avf so there is a left axis deviation okay you can find that the qrs complexes are broad qrs complexes are wide and you can find evidence of left atrial enlargement also so this is your left ventricular hypertrophy okay now what you have to understand is that left ventricular hypertrophy can be because of a pressure overload or from a volume overload so when you get left ventricular hypertrophy from pressure overload this happens in conditions where there is a stenosis or there is an increase of flow to the blood so this can happen in systemic hypertension this can happen in systemic hypertension it can happen in aortic stenosis okay so whenever there is a pressure overload what will you find on the ecg you can find st segment depression and t wave inversions in the lateral leads okay you can find associated sc segment depression and t wave inversions in the lateral leads and this is what we call as the lv strain pattern lv strain pattern okay and what are the conditions where you get an lv volume overload this is seen in mr and ar okay so let us look at this ecg again can you see that there is st segment depression and t wave inversion right so there is an st segment depression and t wave inversion in the lateral leads and this is what we call as your lv strain pattern okay so this is your lv strain pattern fine so we have understood how do we identify 
left ventricular hypertrophy on the ECG. Now let us move to right ventricular hypertrophy. Let us move to right ventricular hypertrophy. Okay. What are the abnormalities in the QRS complexes that you will see? What are the abnormalities in the QRS complexes that you will see? Now, this is pretty much in the same way. This is your RV, this is your LV and your RV is hypertrophy. Correct? Your RV is hypertrophy. So, this is your V1 and this is your V5, V6. Right? So, where will be the axis of the vector? Of, along what direction? Along the direction where the en chamber enlargement is more. So, do not you think the net vector will get shifted rightward? It will get shifted rightward. Okay. So, what happens to the complexes in V1? Because the electrical activity is towards V1, you will have taller complexes in V1 and you will have positive complexes in V1. So, the R wave in V1 will be more than 7 mm and the R by S ratio in V1 will be more than 1. So, if you go back to the lecture on the basics of ECG, you will know that normally in V1 the R waves are very small, right? But when there is right ventricular hypertrophy, the, because of the direction of the net vector is now getting directed towards V1, the R wave becomes more than 7 mm in V1 and R by rest ratio is more than 1. Okay. And you will have deep S waves in V6. You will have negatively directed deep S waves in V6. Okay. Fine. So, let us look at this here. You have tall R waves in V1 and you have deep S waves in V6. Okay tall R waves in V1 and deep S waves in V6. Next, what are the other things you will be having? You can have a right axis deviation of more than 90 degrees. Naturally, when there is a right ventricular hypertrophy, the heart will shift rightward. So, you will have a right axis deviation. Fine. You will have a QR complex in V1. The Q wave is very small. Associated right atrial abnormality. So, if you have an RVH, you can have the pressures which are transmitted to the right atrium. So, right atrial abnormalities in the form of what? In the form of P pulmonale. In the form of P pulmonale. Then, can the RV also go into strain? The RV also can go into strain and if it goes into strain, you will have STT changes, ST segment depression T wave inversion in your septal waves, in your V1 and V2. So, can you see here? You have seen your tall R waves and deep S waves. What is the axis here? It is predominantly, predominantly a right axis deviation. Okay. Then, can you see STT changes in your septal waves? Yes, you can see. Can you see slightly pointed P waves, which is your P? pulmonale. If it is more than 2.5 small boxes, we call it your P pulmonale. So, that is about your RVH. So, where do you get RVH? You can get RVH in pulmonary thromboembolism, right? You can get it in pulmonary thromboembolism. You can get it in pulmonary hypertension, okay? So, these are some of the conditions where you can find a right ventricular hypertrophy. Okay. So, with this we have come to the end of how to approach chamber enlargement and hypertrophies. So, what all have we looked at? So, we have looked at right ventricular hypertrophy, left ventricular hypertrophy. So, with this we have understood the approach to chamber enlargement. In the next session we will be looking at bradyarrhythmias. Okay. Thank you.